Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a generic game menu. Now this game menu is gonna have essentially four buttons. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the initial game menu with a play button, a quit button. I'll also show you how you can switch to other um, menus. So like a settings menu, as well as like an info menu, we can include, I don't know, like um, tutorial information, um, maybe just any type of info that you want to add there. We'll go in there at a later date. Um, we're also not gonna go into how to set up the setting page yet. This will just be how to transition the UI accordingly and match it um, with whatever intentions you're trying to make. Now, in this tutorial, I'm gonna be utilizing two plugins. One of them is going to be the async loading screen. I'm not gonna go super in depth on what it can do, but we will use it as basically a loading screen from when we hit the play button. Uh, I find it a very easy tool to use. Um, it does loading screens automatically. It makes life very simple, at least for me. Now you can go about doing your own type of loading screens, whether it is um, level streaming or whatever the case may be. Uh, but for this tutorial, that's what I'll be using. And the other one is gonna be the Common UI. Now Common UI has really amazing features. It has terrible documentation pretty much everywhere. Uh, and honestly, for me, it took me to watch tons of tutorial videos to kind of figure out what each things do. I will show you just some generic info on it. This is not going to be a common UI tutorial, but we will be utilizing it. The things that I do use, I will make sure to go over with all of you. Uh, so with that, let's get started on creating a game menu. All right, so first things first is we're going to need to install both the plugins. Now, you will have to grab the async loading screen off of the marketplace. It is completely free, so no worries on that. Make sure to install to engine. Before opening your project, it just saves you some time so you don't have to restart things over and over again. After that, you'll want to go into your plugins. So edit plugins. You can search for async or you can actually just type loading. It'll pop up as first. Turn that on. And then you want to go into common UI. And then you want to also turn that on as well. These are the two plugins we'll be using. You'll definitely need them in order to go across doing this. All right. Now that we have both the plugins, what we'll need to do now is work on our widgets. So the first thing we're going to need to do is basically build our base widget. This widget is what's going to be pushing all of the other widgets. Um, by push, I mean this is what's going to switch between the main menu, the settings, um, the info tab, and then going back to the main menu and going back and forth. So what we'll need to do first is we're gonna create a widget. So um, I do have two images that I added already. One is going to be for my background and the other one is going to be for my loading screen. So um, if you have two widgets, cool, uh, import those, do that, or not widgets, uh, images. Um, now let's go into making the widget. We'll go into here, we're going to blueprint class. What we're gonna to want to search for is I think this is, what is it, common user widget. All right, these are, anything with common in front of it is using the common UI. If you didn't add that, you're not gonna see it. So a lot of these blueprints are using just common UI stuff. So very important. I view Common UI as way better than the standard Unreal Engine blueprints because there's so much more you can do with it. And it natively provides controller support. So if you want uh, somebody to be able to use Xbox, PlayStation, Switch controllers, you need Common UI. Not using Common UI makes the process horrendous. So highly recommend if you ever want controller support, don't try to do it with the basic Unreal Engine uh, widget blueprints and get common UI. It will save you time. So, so much effort. <laughs> All right. So for our widget, it's going to be W was it widget blueprint underscore. And we'll name this menu stack. Open this up. So like any other type of menu, 
I'm gonna grab a canvas and just toss that on there. Next, we're going to need to do, oh, sorry for that. We're gonna need to grab a stack. Stack, if I can type, we're gonna get the common activatable widget stack. Throw that onto the canvas panel. Now from here, we're gonna to wanna to change the anchor. We want it to fit around the entire area. And then under root content widget class, switch this to common activatable widget. You actually don't really have to do that, uh, but I'll show you what the purpose of doing that will do in a moment. So from here, let's rename this to just, um, I guess we could just do menu stack. Now we're gonna need to create our actual menus. So this is just where we're gonna start pushing the main menu, pushing the settings and all of that. This is just gonna be like the general um, centralization of everything. So next we're gonna go into our menu. So let's create a new one, blueprint class. Now we're gonna search for activatable widget. As you saw when we added the stack over here, it is a common activatable widget stack. So it's a stack that contains activatable widgets. So you have to now make activatable widgets. Repeating a lot of the same terms, but once you start getting used to it, it um, gets a bit easier. Sorry, uh, activatable widget all the way at the bottom. We'll hit select. We'll do WBP. Oh, accidentally hit enter. WBP, and we'll just name this main menu. Open this up. They're on canvas. From here, we're gonna grab a image. Throw that down here. Changing the anchor so that we can fit it around. Make offset to zero. Save us so much time. You don't really have to name this. You actually don't need to have that as a variable either. I'm gonna change my brush into my background. Next, I'm going to grab a vertical box because I'm gonna put all my buttons just in a vertical box. We're gonna change the anchor to left middle. We'll put that to zero. And then I think alignment 0 0.5, cool. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the buttons will always be on the left side of the screen. And then I did 0 0.5 alignment here because if I do zero, it's actually gonna be kind of like the bottom right. And I kind of want it in the center so that it's even um, on both sides. So with that, I'm also going to need to push that to the right because they're a little too close to the wall. So let me see, X position 50. Does that look good? Is that good enough indent? Should we do a little more? Maybe like a 75, what about 100? You know, 100 is good. And then we'll change the size to something like 400, good width, and then maybe make this a little larger, 600, a little more. Yeah, that should be good. Um, okay, cool. So now we have the vertical box and now we want to put our buttons inside there. Now, the thing is we're not gonna be using the normal button as you will see here. We actually want to make our own buttons because it'll save us a lot of time. If you ever want to change the styles of your buttons, you'd be able to do it all at once. It is dramatically helpful um, and one of like, the greatest things about this. So to create the buttons, let's go into a new folder. We'll just name that like widgets. It's not really a good name, but nonetheless, blueprint class. And now we're gonna search for common and then button. What's it called here? And okay, cool. Common button base. 
So you'll notice that when you type in common, there's a lot of common things here. These are all based upon common UI. And you'll notice that they're all basically ch child blueprints of other standard um, widgets. So like text block and you have common text block. It basically allows you to customize the style of all of them. So if you were to ever edit a single text and let's, let's say the text had the color of green on your all of your menus and then you're like, you know what? I want to now make this blue. You change the style to blue and every button changes. So you don't have to go into edit all of the text. It will save you tons and tons of effort. So nonetheless, that's my little rant. We're now going to select on button base widget blueprint underscore button base. We'll open this up. From here, we're going to throw in Let's just do a border, throw that. And then for brush, I'm actually gonna, where's the brush color? Turn that to zero. And then we're going to now need to add text. So text, where's the common text? Throw that on there. And then for this, for text, I believe you have to also change the name to text action name. Should compile. Let me show you what happens if you don't. Let's just random text. Oh. Okay. Sorry. I think I'm thinking of a different, different uh, blueprint. So if you actually did was a button. If you do the common bound action button, it requires you to put a very specific name. Otherwise, the compile won't work. That's not the case for button base, so you can actually ignore that. But there's a little tip for you there. Um, so you can actually name this whatever you want. So this could just be text txt button name compile done. And then for this, we also have to do one last thing. What we're going to do is create a variable. We'll name this button text and string. We're going to now make that instance editable and expose on spawn. This just allows us to edit the string beforehand so that we can see um, the button text immediately. Oh, almost forgot. We need to also make sure that this button text is in the center of the screen. So for vertical alignment, we're going to select the center align. And then we're also wanting to go down justification and put that in the middle. Let's also make this. Mm, should we leave the text size to 24? I think we can't. Let's change it to 30 and just see see how that goes. If anything, we could go back and shrink it, and then I can show you the purpose of why we're building a common base button. And then from here, next thing we're going to need to do is you'll notice under style where there's none, we need to actually create our own. Let's see if this button works. Cool. So you can hit the button. This will allow you to create a new style for the button. So I actually don't know what the the um, what's the word I'm looking for naming convention for this would be. So we'll just do common button style. That actually looks horrendous. Probably not the case at all, but nonetheless. And then we'll just name this mm, menu button. This will now open up. Actually, wish it didn't open it up like that. Can I get the there we go? Cool. So I prefer not to see the full blueprint editor because there's really no point in seeing the event graph for me right now. 
And then from here, this is where you can design all of your buttons really easily. So if you need to change what the base hovered and press would look like, you can add a tint to all of them, which is what I'm gonna do. And then it will affect every button of this style. So for here, let's go with a tint of, let's go with a bit of a green, mm, maybe a, let's go a bit of a harsher green. And then for here, let's go for kind of like a, a light teal color. And then for pressed, we'll just do like a gray. Bit of obvious changes here. And then we'll go back to our button base blueprint. And then now our style should automatically be linked up if you hit that plus button. If you didn't, just make sure to select this. Uh, if you wanted to see, if you go into blueprint class, button style, you'll have common button style. And then you click that, you'll be able to create it just like we just did. Um, it's the exact same way. And then now this style could get used for anybody using the style. All right. So now that that's done, we shouldn't need to touch that right now because I believe we got our string set up. We're all good. And then now we can search for WGB button base. And then we'll control D, D, D. All right. And now we can change this to, let's just do button play. Oh, maybe I should have did this. Let's do control D one, two, three. And then that way I could just do settings. Oop, I didn't mean to delete that info. And quit. We'll also need to change the button text. So the variable that we created is by default right here. So we'll type in play. settings i think i actually forgot something to do in the button so we'll have to reopen that in a second because you'll notice that these texts aren't changing so let's actually reopen our button base select on our text yeah and we'll see where we have content text it's not actually bound so click on bind select button text compile save The fact that the text is not showing here yet, it's kind of annoying. You know what? Here's what we can do. Instead of binding, we could do pre-construct, get this, select on our text, make this a variable, drag out this, set text, Plug that in. And there we go. Now we can see it. Cool. I prefer to see it automatically instead of when you hit play, then it appears. All right. Close out that button. Now let's fix these buttons so it doesn't look a little janky. We're going to hit fill for all. So that's great. And then let's just add a padding of, I don't know, 20. Does that look good? See, overall, we got, yeah, I guess that's that's good. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. And to show you really quick on the style, if I actually open up the style over here, if I change this color to, let's make it, I guess, closer to a brighter green. Actually, yeah, and we'll notice that the colors change. Let's make something more noticeable. Let's make it blue. Compile. And now it's blue. So you'll see the difference between using styles. Instead, if you had individual buttons, you'd actually have to click on it, go over to it, click on the style, and then change it throughout yourself. So quite horrendous. Saves us some time. Let's actually make that back to green. 
file. All right. Now we have our buttons. The next thing we now need to do is create our settings. So for me, it's going to be basically the same thing as what I just did here. So I'm going to control D. Change this to settings. Let's open up settings. We're going to now change the names here. Um, what are some common settings? Let's go with um, audio. Audio. And we'll go with controls. Controls. Um, the graphics, but there's no S and now I put another D for some reason. Graphics. And then we'll need a back button. All right. We're not really going to do much here. So this should be good for now. We'll leave it open, but we're not going to touch it yet because there's really nothing for us to do yet. So now what we're going to need to do is go back to our stack. So with our stack, if you actually select on this drop down menu where we put common activatable widget, we're going to hit main menu. This is going to be our default content. So if we actually, oh, we can't hit play yet because I haven't set up the HUD yet, but nice. We'll be able to set that to the default. It's going to automatically start from the main menu. So we we'll, won't have to do anything here. All right. So let's go into our graph. Now we're going to need to do stuff to where we can now push our settings menu or menu, go back and forth between um, which menu we're on. And then we'll also need to set up the buttons for the play and the quit button and the back button. So now let's do a custom event. We'll do this push menu. Control D, push settings. We're going to now grab our menu stack. Control D. And the stacks have this thing called push widget. What this will do is it will choose the type of class that you're using and it's going to push it. So uh, by push, I mean it's going to make it visible on the UI. So kind of how like adding to viewport, that's kind of what it's doing. And then it deactivates and activates accordingly without taking up um, space on the viewport. Truly helpful. Let's go into main menu, control D, plug that in, and then settings. All right. Now, the other thing we're going to need to do for our main menu and our settings is we need to set up those buttons as well. But we also need to be able to push um, and deactivate themselves in the main menu. So what I mean by that is we can't, let's see, uh, let's grab the settings button. And let me make this a little bigger. So you'll notice that they have different button um, events compared to normal buttons. So uh, on button base clicked is just like on clicked as you would see a button, but it also has the ability of on button double click. So if you wanted to have something activate based upon double clicking the button, this is where you would click on here. This is something you normally have to build yourself. So it's really great that it's built in by itself. It um, is a lot less work on your part. And then hovered, unhovered, it's all the same. Uh, let's do on clicked. So on play button, what we want to do is just open level. 
So you want to go into your game. So I'm just going to do demo map. When we hit play, it's going to open up the demo map. That's super simple. That's what we want. And then for quit, we're going to do on button base. Click again. We'll just want quit game. And we'll quit. Uh, let's just do owning player. You don't really have to, but nonetheless, um, quits the game. Next for settings on clicked. What we need to do is the thing that I was originally talking about is we need to be able to push the settings widget, but we also have to deactivate our own widget. So we can deactivate ourselves, but you'll notice that we can't push if you type in push and you can't activate a widget. You kind of just activate yourself. So what we need to do is make sure to pass along the menu stack. So what we'll do is add a new variable, call this menu stack, search and variables for menu st stack. We'll also go into the settings button. So copy or was it control C go into settings, click pretty much anywhere and then control V paste that there. Perfect. So now they both have that variable go into menu stack again. We're going to drag off this and we're going to do set menu stack and sell. Set menu stack and sell. Control. Oop. Oh, I forgot to compile. Yep, there you go. All right. So now on button click for button settings, I can grab the menu stack. I can push settings. And then I will deactivate the current widget. So when I select on the settings button, I deactivate menu, main menu, and then I push the settings button. And then I'm going to need to do the same thing here for the back button on base click. We're going to grab the menu stack. We're going to push menu. And deactivate widget. All right, so let's see, we should have all the buttons set up, quit settings. Um, I am not gonna make a page for info because I'm not sure what I want to put in there yet, but it's gonna work the same as settings where we'll be able to push a widget. Um, you would do the same thing where it'd be push info and then make sure to deactivate whatever the case may be. So let's go over here. Now we need to set up a main menu. So under maps, let's go to level. We'll call this main menu. Yep, yep, yep. Should have a blank world. It's exactly what we want. Now there's a few things we're gonna need to make. We need to make it so that the default HUD class will be the main menu HUD class. And then we also want to be able um, to create our widget from the beginning of the game. So let's go into, um, we'll just make a new folder here just to centralize everything. We'll just call this HUD. There's a few blueprints, blueprints we're gonna need to make. We're gonna need to make a game mode. We'll call this game mode, uh, GM for game mode. Um, I don't know, menu mode. We'll open that up. From here, we want no pawn. And then now we're gonna need to create a HUD. So for here, we wanna create new blueprint. Go back into UI HUD and we'll call this BP for blueprint, HUD, 
menu. Um, main menu. A lot of the word menu everywhere, but nonetheless, um, cool. So that should be set. Shouldn't need to touch this right now. Closing that. Now let's open up the HUD main menu. I don't know why I closed it previously, but nonetheless. All right. On begin play, we're going to need to now create widget. From here, we will create our menu stack, owning player, so player controller. And then add to viewport. And then let's see what else. So we also need to make sure our UI mode. So set UI mode only. We want to make sure that they can interact with the UI as well as have a cursor. So get player controller. UI to focus should be the menu stack. Just shoving that over here. Um, I mean, you could lock always, flush input, whatever the case may be. All right, so that will push the menu automatically. Let's actually set and then under your main menu level, world settings, make sure to set the GM menu mode. I think there's still blueprints we need to create. Let's see, hit play. Oh, I have something broken here. Oh, sorry. Completely unrelated to this tutorial. Hit play. Oh, all right. We hit settings. Okay, it's not working. We hit play. Okay, so play button works but push settings did not work. Let's go into graph. Settings. Our settings button didn't work. Let's see. I'm looking at the debug list right now. Wonder. Let's do it this way. Go here. Deactivate the widget beforehand and then push. Okay. Access none trying to read menu stack. Did I forget to do something in the stack? Settings. Let's set menu stack. Self. Play works, setting doesn't. Access none, push your settings. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we're calling push settings through the main menu. It's not working here. Let me see. Okay, so I found what the problem was. Uh, what the problem is, is that under the menu stack, I have the root widget class set to main menu. And what I actually need to do is that under pre-construct, I need to push menu. 
And what we'll do is we'll remove this. I mean, I guess we could remove it to none, but it actually wouldn't change anything. And for that is because we need to be able to push the main menu first and then it sets the stack because if we had the root set, we were never actually setting the menu stack for it. So this didn't have a value and it couldn't push the settings. So if we actually go into here, press play, and then now when we hit settings, we'll now go. And then you also notice that we get this little fade in, fade out. I actually didn't do anything and it automatically happens. So we have our buttons working, we can quit, we can hit play. Uh, we can also transition to settings. None of these buttons do anything yet, but the back button does go back to the main menu. So the very last thing we're gonna do, very, very simple, is we're gonna add a loading screen. So now we'll go into project settings. We'll select on async loading screen. Um, default loading screen. Uh, I have set the background to XYZ loading. And then the other thing we need to do is let me close default. Um, actually, is it default? Yeah, yeah, actually, it's default we need. Okay, so make sure you have show widget overlay turned on. You don't need actually loading text. That's actually completely irrelevant. And then under background, make sure to set to XYZ loading and then image I put the fill, you can put that whatever you want. If you want it just to scale based off the X or Y, you can also add in a throbber. So I put a circular throbber. Uh, you actually can put whatever you would like. And there's a lot of customizability. Like I said, I'm not really going in depth here. Um, this is fully up to you. If you want to look into it further, there's actually a lot listed here that you can click. I am going to be using the center layout. Um, as the layout is defined here based on classic center letterbox sidebar and dual sidebar. There's a lot listed there. Let me actually close out like all of this so that it makes it a little bit easier to read. So if you open this up, you can select on the background. This is where you can put your image. You can put multiple images and then you can also set it to where it's going to shuffle based on the shuffle button here. So if you have like 17 different loading screens, you can put them all there. Really helpful tool. And then layout, I just put center. Now, one thing you'll mind you is that if I hit play, you'll notice that nothing has been happening this entire time. In order to view it, you need to be able to do a standalone game. And then you'll have it load. There's also one last thing about it I want to talk about. So once this loads, in a second, you notice that it kind of starts off black like this, and then you get your loading screen afterwards. That only happens when it's standalone uh, and you're in the editor. If you package the game, you actually don't run into that issue. The other thing I want to show you is that under project settings, you have a minimum loading screen display time. I set mine to five. Uh, this means that you will see the loading screen for about five seconds. I can actually change that to like 10. You can also change it to where it will auto complete when loading completes. What this will do is that once the level has fully loaded, it will make the loading screen disappear automatically. So if you have this turned on, no matter what time you have displayed here, it's irrelevant, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then it will automatically just load based on what's complete. I'll set it to 10 and we'll hit load so that you can see my loading screen a little longer. It's a really helpful tool because whenever you open a level, it's automatically going to provide that loading screen for you anyways. Bam. So we have our loading. And then we have a bunch of other settings that you can set as well. All right, so last final display is that we can hit the play button, we can hit the settings. Info was not set up, but you can also quit. This is a standard game menu. 
Now we'll be able to go into the settings at a later time as well as the info, but this is how you can create a main menu utilizing common UI, which is significantly better than the standard default UI and provides a lot more functionality. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, join the Discord, all that other type of self-promotion that you could possibly think of. I really appreciate all of your guys' support. Any feedback, love to hear it. Any type of requests, would also love to hear it. Hope you have a great rest of your day.